Ah, uh, editing YouTube videos. You know, I once thought that editing a YouTube video was very easy. And when it comes to using a video editor program, it's true. The hard part is to utilize the given tools to create something really awesome. Hi there, name's Michael. And today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks about video editing that I've learned over, well, almost six years now. Now, to be clear, I'm no professional. Although, what does professional really mean? All right, I'm an amateur professional and not all of my videos look as well edited as they could be. But that doesn't stop me from sharing my knowledge to you. Now, there are a few things that you need to get right even before you can start editing a video. The first thing, of course, would be the source material. Now, depending on if you're making your own videos or you want to edit someone else's, remember one thing. Look for good material. And especially if you're recording yourself, make sure to retake a scene, sentence or whatever until it feels right. Because this is going to help later down in the editing process so that mistakes like this don't happen. All right, step number two, the actual editing. When it comes down to programs, it doesn't really matter which program you personally use since all of my tips can be applied to several different solutions. I will be using DaVinci Resolve for this video. So let's go ahead and fire it up. There are typically two file formats that most content creators record the videos in. MP4 and MKV. MKV has the big advantage that the recording does not break when your recording software or something else crashes. Now, these file types are really great for distributing and viewing a video, but for editing, they suffer from poor playback performance. So if you notice any hiccups or delays when editing your video, then it's a good idea to either convert them into some of these formats, or if you're using DaVinci Resolve, you can simply right-click them and select Optimize Media. Be aware that this takes some time, but also uses up more storage on your hard drive. All right, so now let's go into the editing tips. This of course depends on the type of video you're editing. But one thing still stands. Get the viewer's attention in the beginning. You know, leave an impression so that viewers will stay. For IRL recordings, it's pretty easy. Add some text to emphasize keywords and maybe use some zoom effects. Just start with a dynamic intro. That is what viewers will see first. When using zooms, I also recommend to use ease keyframes. Most programs out there either have a button for easing keyframes or a keyframe curve. Easing provides a smoother and more dynamic feel to the zoom. The next thing you want to do is to get rid of all of the pauses. You know, those moments where you don't speak. By removing these parts, the video will get a faster pace, which is important to keep a viewer entertained. I recommend that, unless it is an intentional break, that you remove pauses that are longer than half a second. But this of course depends on what you say and how fast your overall speech is. If you are talking more slowly, then you can leave longer pauses in. Just make sure that it doesn't affect the pacing. Once you've edited out all of the pauses and, well, things you don't want in your video, it's time to add some B-rolls. B-rolls are videos or images that run beside you talking. They help by distracting a viewer so that they don't get bored by just looking at one thing only. Wait, if you're explaining something for example, try to use some images, videos or animations with keyframes to further set your points. Animations can be done by using DaVinci Resolve's Fusion but also After Effects or by just utilizing keyframes in the editing program itself. Make also sure to place two or three like and subscribe banners somewhere in the video. I recommend it in the beginning, like after one minute or so, somewhere in the middle and in the end. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel if you want to know how you can make one of these. Alright, now that we've edited our video, it's time to think of an outro. If you want one, of course. For my videos, I choose an orange screen with a flash transition for the, I think it's called, outro cards. If you want to use an outro, then I recommend a length of maximum 15 to 20 seconds, since you cannot even go beyond that anyway. If you want to advertise another video of yours, then I recommend you to do so in the video itself, just like this. But make sure to correct the outro so that you stay under 20 seconds. And yeah, that's it. All that's left to say now is, good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.